Hi everyone! This is a follow-up to my previous video about this Agilent function generator. The output amplifier was faulty and I tried to come up with a replacement. This is the original Agilent hybrid amplifier. And this is my prototype. Almost working, but not quite. There is some instability at the very top of the range at 80 MHz and maximum amplitude of 10 volts peak to peak. With a slightly lower amplitude or frequency it seems to work fine. Let's see if we can improve this. I want to design a board using QFN16 version of the chip that I showed in the datasheet in my previous video. And here is the schematic. Quite simple, just the chip 25 pins and a couple of gain setting resistors. And I added a couple of zero ohm resistors here as links to either ground this point or connect to pin 6. So far I tested with this point always grounded and I'm not sure this connection to pin 6 will be ever used but just in case I want to try that at some point I decided to reserve this option. And I also added some bypass capacitors on the power rails. Perhaps they are not necessary, because there are bypass capacitors in the generator, right under the amplifier on the other side of the board. But because there is some room here, why not reserve the footprints just in case. And here is the board. This is the bottom view, and as you can see I added keep out areas around the input, around the gain resistors, and around the output, as recommended in the datasheet. Everywhere else are ground planes, both top and bottom, for heat sinking, and this rectangle is a solder mask removed from the top to attach an additional heat sink. And here is the result. Beautiful. And here is an assembled one. I'm still using the socket. I will get rid of it later, but once I do, it is going to be much more difficult to experiment. So let's try with the socket for now. So here we are again at 10 volts peak to peak and 10 megahertz. Let's increase the frequency. 60, 70, and look at this. The same instability at 80 megahertz. Unbelievable. And fine at 70. So, despite of the fact that the datasheet suggests uh, that this QFN16 package, or they also call it RGT, should be used in new designs, so it should be better, I suppose, we still have exactly the same problem. And also, I showed in my previous video this table with recommended resistors, for different gains and different packages. Now I'm using this pair for RGT package and gain 10. And I also showed this paragraph, which says in particular that increasing these resistors should lead to decreased bandwidth, but improved stability. So let's try increasing these resistors. I doubled the values of the resistors. So now the feedback resistor is 1K and the gain resistor is 110 ohms. Let's see what happens. So again, 10 volts peak to peak and 10 megahertz. Let's increase the frequency. And here is the limit, 80 megahertz. And it looks fine, however, the amplitude dropped and because of that, the test is inconclusive. Because uh, when this is compensated during calibration, 
by increasing the uh, input level to the amplifier from the DAC, it's not clear if we are going to see this problem or not. And I cannot increase the amplitude anymore right now, because this is the limit. So, let's test on the bench. I prepared this test setup. Let's see, this socket on the output side has power and 50 ohm series matching resistor. And this should go to the scope. This is a feed-through terminator. And on the other side we have input and two tiny 50 ohm SMD resistors. One is across this cable for termination and another is in series with the input, just like in the generator. And this uh, will be connected to this function generator. This is another unit I have. Here we go again. 10 volts peak to peak, 10 megahertz. Let's increase the frequency to 80. And now the amplitude dropped to 8.3 volts which is about 17% drop, or less than a dB. Should not be a problem for calibration, I suppose. But now we can compensate. We have 2 volts peak-to-peak -peak input. Let's increase that until we reach 10 volts on the output. Here we are. And I think we are still doing fine. And let's push even harder. 10.5, 11, 11.4, 11.7, and here we are, the instability, around 11.7 or so. So we do have some headroom, perhaps I did not have to increase the resistors that much, I can experiment with that later, but for now let's see if this works in the generator after calibration. I went through calibration that requires a power meter to measure the output at high frequencies. So the output level is measured right at the connector, except this adapter and 10 dB attenuator. 10 volts peak to peak is about 24 dBm, which is a bit too high for this sensor, so I added this 10 dB attenuator. Let's see how it works now. Here we go again. 10 volts peak to peak, 10 megahertz. Let's go up. 70 and 80. Is it stable? Uh, looks like it's not clear. Maybe there is some instability, I'm not sure. Yeah, looks like some instability. Unbelievable, yeah, there is some instability. Just a bit. Despite of having quite a bit of headroom on the bench, still not quite stable in the generator. I increased the values of the resistors again to 1.33k and 150 ohms and recalibrated and the problem is still there. And I found that it is easier to see the problem on this key side scope perhaps because of faster update rate. So we are at 9 volts peak to peak, 80 megahertz. Let's increase to 10 volts peak to peak and it looks clean now, perhaps it takes a bit of warm-up. Here it is. Now we can clearly see the problem. And if we back off a little, to 9 volts, it is nice and clean. So I experimented some more and I found that removing bypass capacitors seems to help for some reason. Go figure. So I removed all of them from my little board and here we are running at 10 volts peak to peak, 80 megahertz. 
and uh, doing just fine. I ran it like this for a couple of hours already, and it seems to be fine. The amplitude here seems to be a bit lower, around 9.7 or so, and the flux scope shows a bit higher, around 9.8. And the scopes are not very accurate, so I can show you with the power meter. So, here it is, 24.24 dBm. And here I printed from the service manual verification table. Uh, where we are supposed to set 23.9 dBm at 80 MHz and verify that we are within 0.423 dB. So, let's see. We can set it to 23.9 dBm and it's a bit higher, 2417, and it is well within uh, that spec of 0.423 dB. And uh, by the way, the original Keysight unit is a bit lower, around 8.9 volts or so. And you might think this is out of cal, but... Uh, According to the power meter, it seems to be just fine. Here it is, I set it to 23.9 and we read 23.67, a bit lower, but well within spec. And you might think that the power sensor might be out of cal, but it agrees very well with my spectrum analyzer, so I am inclined to believe that it is fine. And here is the spectrum analyzer. Look at this, 23.9 dBm here, and we read 23.8 or so on the spectrum analyzer. And the power meter gave us about uh, 23.67, I believe. Not too far. And now let's look at this one. 24.32. And the power meter gave us 24.17, I believe. Quite close. And while we are at this, let's have a look at the second harmonic, which is at uh, 160 megahertz. Minus uh, 35 or 6 dBm from this uh, fixed unit. And uh, this one is at minus ab about 29.8 or something like that, which is a bit higher. So the fixed unit seems to be a bit cleaner. And uh, let's have a look at the third one at 240 megahertz. Minus 36 or so from Keysight and uh, minus 34 and something from the fixed unit, which is a bit higher, but about the same. Not a big difference. Not bad at all. Let's take a look at the schematic again. I showed it in my previous video. So here we have uh, power rails, uh, positive and negative 16 volts. And I'm using these pins, 18 and 19. And uh, pin 1 and 25 on the negative side. And we can see these bypass capacitors here. Then this inductor. Then more bypass capacitors. 0.1 microfarad and 20 microfarads. And these are right under the uh, amplifier on the other side of the board. And then 2.2 ohm resistor. I would think to measure the current for this protection circuitry. 
And uh, somehow putting more bypass capacitors at this point makes things worse. I'm not entirely sure why. So here we are. I believe we have a working output amp replacement. It might need some more testing and tweaks because of variation in parts and parasitics in different units. And I still didn't get rid of the socket, which might improve things a bit more. But so far this seems to work fine. Thanks for watching. Bye.